In this video, let's work on assignment number one. I'll put the city buttons. Let's jump into Visual Studio now and let's come to this server's rootable component here. And we want to output the city list right here. In order to do that, we need to, first of all, have a state variable, just like the servers. The reason why I call it state variable, I'm going to talk about that later when we add interactivity to it. But right now, let's just call it state variable. And uh, this is going to be a list of strings. And it's going to come from the cities repository here. And we can call this get cities method. And with the cities state variable, I can use it to loop through the cities. So I'm going to say for each city inside the cities variable. And don't forget the curly braces. Now I can output buttons. So I want to repeatedly output buttons. I can just use button, but uh, let's try to see how it looks like if I just use button. And the type is going to be button. And I'm going to use bootstrap class. So btn, btn primary, for example. And then inside here, I just need to output the city name. I have to use implicit reserve expression here so at city that's it i believe if i do it this way all of the buttons will be connected so i'm going to add mbsp which is a space and when i do it this way you can see that it, it doesn't like it the reason why it doesn't like it is because it's thinking that this is a like a c sharp right so you can see this error message here. It's trying to consider as a object or expression. So therefore, in order to make it work, we can tell Blazor that this is actually text. So by using this text element here. All right, so let's run the application and see how it looks like. All right, let's go to servers. And we have Toronto, Montreal, Ottawa, Calgary, and Halifax. So it actually looks not bad. So let me add a line break. Let me add another one to restart the application again. Now I have a better line break here. All right, so with this space in between, what happens if I uh, make it smaller? You can see that the buttons stay together. And I think it would be better if the button would kind of collapse a little bit and stack on top of each other once you make the screen smaller. In order to implement that, we're going to use bootstrap class the row and columns. So outside it, I want to use a div. This div will have a class of uh, container for Lloyd. This is not a bootstrap course. So therefore, I'm not going through this in detail. Uh, but this is this div is a container. And I want the text to be centered. And then inside it, I want to have a row. So therefore, I have a row. And I want it to be smaller, so W50, so the width is 50%. And then inside it, I want to have each button as a column. I'm going to say column, and then I'm going to place the button inside here. So that way, I don't need to use this space here. Right? And I need to the column inside the for each loop. So I'm going to cut this over here. Perhaps I don't need two line breaks now, because so I already have a div. Okay. So that's what I think I need. So let's restart the application, see how it looks like. Okay, so I have bigger spaces here, but the good thing about it is that if I make it smaller, you can see the button uh, changes position and start to stack on top of each other. I think that's what I want. Currently, when we click on the button, nothing is happening, and that's not a problem. Later, we are going to add interactivity to this and we're going to filter the server's list. For now, this is all we need to do for this exercise. And hopefully you have done it yourself. And don't worry about the bootstrap part. It's just some style that I want to add into this course. All right, that's everything I want to cover in this video. I will see you in the next one.